Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 18 Beta 4. iOS 18 Beta 4 is out to developers. I would expect iOS 18 Public Beta 2 within a day or so. This typically will release before the Public Beta, and as long as there's no issues, they'll release that soon. This came in at 1.38 gigabytes on my iPhone 15 Pro Max and released alongside a ton of different updates. Everything from iPadOS 17.6 RC to iPadOS 18 Beta 4 and many other updates you can see here. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and then we'll talk about what's new. We'll go to settings, then we'll go to general, then about. As you can see, the build number is 22A5316J. This particular update includes visual changes and feature changes, and this one does have a modem update. So if you were having connectivity issues, hopefully this resolves some of those issues. Now, unfortunately, Apple Intelligence is not active just yet. However, on their website about Apple Intelligence, you can see here, if we just scroll all the way to the bottom, it actually says, says get ready. Apple intelligence will be available in an upcoming beta. Get started with documentation, videos, and forums. So hopefully with beta five, we'll see it. Maybe they'll enable it remotely for a future update or very soon, but they haven't said publicly yet when it will be available. Also, the generative playground has been updated here with a new icon. You can see Aaron P613 on Twitter or X actually posted it. They changed the little dog here, just changed what it looks like overall. So they're definitely making some visual changes there. Now, RCS messaging has been enabled in more countries with this beta as well. So if we go into our settings, then we go down to our apps and then go to messages. If we scroll down, you'll see RCS messaging. It looks like it's now available in the United Kingdom. It's also in the USA and Canada and possibly other areas as well. Make sure to check this section, see if you have it. And I'd love to hear what country you're in if you're actually seeing it now. Back within settings, if we scroll down, you'll see we now have an iCloud section within the settings itself. Why they've actually put it here, I'm not sure, but I like that it's here. It also has that animated subscriber iCloud icon. So that wasn't animated before. If we go back in, you'll see it there and they still have kept it in the same location here if you tap your name at the top. iCloud still appears and it just brings you to the same page. Maybe they'll remove it from this area or location later, but it's still here. Another update they've changed is if you go to your app library and you have hidden apps, they've changed the way it looks. It just says hidden and then has outlines of the apps themselves instead of the little I crossed out here. So they've just changed that a little bit. It still verifies with Face ID and then if you have anything in there, it will then show it to you. There's also a small change change with the stocks app icon. So the refining design, you can see it looks a little bit different. The little stripes there vertically are not as noticeable and it's just a small change. Now, if you're using Apple CarPlay, there's an update with all new wallpapers. Thanks to Bryce for sending this in on Twitter or X. And you'll see that we have some new wallpaper here. They have both light and dark modes and they've been updated for iOS 18. There's also an update to the music player. Thanks to Dan Bernab on X or Twitter. You'll see that it has a little update to music and I can try this out in my own car. If you'd like to see maybe an overview, if there's enough changes, let me know in the comments below. The control center has some updates as well. And you'll see here, maybe you've noticed them already. There's new icons for both the alarm and stopwatch. If we take a look compared to beta three side by side on the left is beta three on the right is beta four. They've just updated them a little bit. There's also a new icon you can add here that doesn't seem to work just yet. If we go in and we type Bluetooth, you'll see it says Bluetooth power toggle. Maybe we'll finally be able to just turn those off completely with Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, but it doesn't really do anything at this time. Even if you add it here, you'll see it's there, but it does nothing. So that's something that's there. Hopefully they'll update that in future versions where we can just turn that off altogether instead of having this kind of odd icon or icon that expands. Maybe we'll just have faster access to it. Also, they've removed one of these icons. Apple music is gone here. So if we go again and try and add this, go to add control center and then look for music, there's no longer music options. So you'll see that we have it here. There's an icon there that we can add. And if you search for it, you have access to a music shortcut. It's there. You can open music. It's gone in beta four. The same is also true on the lock screen on beta three. You could open music from the lock screen. It's gone again in beta four. Now, if you have an iPhone 15 pro or 15 pro max with the action button, if I press and hold and turn on the flashlight, there's a nice new animation. They continue to update this. So you'll see it's 
just kind of updated with this really nice animation. We had one before, but they continue to update it. So again, if I turn it back on, you can see what it looks like back within settings under messages. We talked about RCS earlier, but if we scroll down, we have the satellite connection demo satellite apparently is active in the U S at least on select carriers, according to the release notes. So that seems to be active if it is, and I can use it, I'll try it out and maybe do a demo about it. Also last week or with beta three and the public beta, they updated the emoji picker. If we go into messages and you'll see with beta three on the left and beta four on the right, they look similar. However, we can now add our frequently used maybe stickers in a row here where we can't do that before with beta three, it wants to do one or the other. So you actually have to replace it where now it again, lets me do one after the other and then send them as one concurrent text. So it's all in one, instead of having to send them individually. If we go back into photos, we have a new information pop-up that says swipe for more view your favorite collections and photos with a swipe. So that's been updated. And then also if we go back under iOS 18 changes, I did notice this when I was uploading a photo to X or Twitter, it actually says upload suspended tap to resume. I'm not sure if you've seen that before. I personally haven't seen it but let me know if you've seen this in previous betas or even previous iOS versions. I wanted to mention a few notable bug fixes this time around. Not only do animations seem much, much smoother in this update, but if we go into photos and we zoom into one of our photos, I took this photo myself. If we zoom into it, it would usually degrade. It's much, much better this time around. It keeps its quality and you can see as far as you can zoom in. Of course, it's going to look a little bit blurry as you get very far as far as zooming in. But if we zoom out a little bit, it still looks much much better than it did in previous betas. Customization seems to work much, much better. So if you go and edit and customize switching between automatic dark and light mode, things like that definitely seem much better. It's a little smoother and they continue to refine this and make it much better. They also fixed an issue with the widgets themselves. They actually said if tinting is enabled for the home screen shortly after updating, the widgets might appear with the incorrect background color until it reloads automatically by the system. They've since resolved that issue. They've also fixed screen time where I know that was still an issue for quite a few people. It seems that that's finally fixed for most people, no issues there. And when switching to games, sometimes the audio would mute that has also been fixed in beta four. As far as remaining bugs, while well, the wallpaper dimming bug is ever present, you can see here it desaturates. I would like to have my vibrant wallpaper here without it desaturating. And it's just sort of jarring in this update as well. Another thing I had when I first installed this, I went over to my social networking folder here, opened it up and the phone immediately froze. I couldn't do anything. I had to do a hard reboot to get it back. I haven't had that since, but that happened to me earlier on. Now, as far as security updates, I would expect some of those a little bit later, but performance seems to be smoother. That's probably something to do with the animations. Some people have said that the animations might seem a little slower, but they're definitely very smooth. The overall heat of the device so far seems to be pretty reasonable. It's not very hot at all, especially installing a beta. Typically it will heat the phone up quite a bit. Of course, it will take a little while for things to complete in the background. And we'll talk about that on the weekend with new features and the overall experience and performance. If we go into our settings, go to battery, we'll go up to battery, battery health and charging. I'm down to 94% with 253 cycles, completely normal at this point. And if we go back to the battery itself, Today, I've had two hours and 30 minutes of screen active time, three hours and 48 minutes of screen idle time. I don't see the actual install here where we had that message before. It would tell us that it was installing. It could affect performance and heat. And I would love to see them bring that back, but I haven't seen that in a little while. If we go back here, maybe we'll see it in previous days, but it doesn't appear to be there anymore. So either way, we'll check the battery this weekend, see what it's like as far as daily use. And if you're wondering if you should install iOS 18 beta four, if you're on beta three, I would recommend installing it. But if you're waiting for this, I would wait for public beta two that typically will sort of confirm that this is stable enough and that could be within a day or so or by the time you're watching this video of course next week i would expect some other things as well it looks like we could be on a weekly schedule for ios 18 although it could be a couple weeks until we see beta 5 so ios 18 beta 5 could either be next monday or tuesday or the following monday or tuesday however i would expect ios 17.6 to release to the public probably next monday or tuesday at this point that's pretty certain. Typically they wait a week or so after the RC since that release today. Well, I would expect it on next Monday or so.
Then we'll move on to iOS 17.7 beta one as well. So lots of things going on, lots of updates, and I'm sure there's many more features to talk about in these updates, but we're still waiting for those. I did run initial benchmarks and they did better than the previous beta. So 2,817 for single core, 6,919 for multi-core. If we take a look at the history here, you'll see it's definitely a little bit better, both for single or multi-core on all of the previous betas. So it seems like it's an improvement, still has a little ways to go. And of course, a final release could be expected sometime in mid September. So we have a few betas left and a lot of refinement left. Let me know your experience in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.